Sheesh, talk about a glow up. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Mad Lad Instruments. My name is Drew, and this is my old CNC spindle and gantry assembly. It gets the job done, but it's a little bit chattery, and I want to take a lot deeper cuts. So today we're going to be updating it with some half-inch aluminum plate, but before we cut anything, we need to do a little design work. Let's see what we're looking at. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the Fusion 360 model for what I am lovingly calling the Leviathan Drive. Now, Leviathan is this big giant serpent from biblical times that would come out and eat everything, and the hope is that with this particular upgrade, our spindle will be able to dive and take much deeper cuts and munch away at a lot more material, especially softer materials like wood and softer metals. So that that was kind of the idea behind the naming convention here really big part of this design is modularity i wanted everything to be modular and able to be upgraded later so i have decoupled the assembly into three kind of sub assemblies if you want to think about them that way there's the carriage plate that is the part that actually couples the spindle to the linear actuation stage so it and it carries it up and down hence carriage stage then you have the linear actuation components which comprises the linear rails and the ball screw which actually allow the linear or sorry the linear motion the actuation up and down of the spindle and then you have the back plane that everything kind of sits on and where the modularity comes into play is let's say later down the road you want to allow your z-axis to have more travel all you have to do is just upgrade the back plane and the linear rails you can keep the carriage plate and the linear couplers these are hgh20s i believe yeah it looks like they are but you can technically keep them even though like when you buy linear rails they're going to give you an extra set most of the time you don't usually just buy the rails you buy the rails and the couplers but with that, like I said, if you were wanting to get a longer stroke, you can just upgrade the back plane and the rails and you can keep everything else in place. So it's modular in that way. Let's say later down the road, you want to upgrade the spindle and do like a VFD spindle, which is something that I want to do eventually. All you would have to do is just design a new carriage plate that fits the footprint of that VFD spindle and then you can keep the rest pretty much intact. So very modular, very upgradable. And that was one of the goals. And I also liked adding a little bit of weight relief here. So you have these pockets that are cut out You'll see in the actual video that we don't get all of them cut out, sadly, but a little bit of weight relief never hurt. It allows you to accelerate it just that much quicker. Not that we're going to be accelerating this Z-axis at supersonic speed and stuff like that, but as an engineer, you're always thinking about bragging rights and how quickly you can move things. And if you can create just a little bit of weight relief, that means you can get a little bit more acceleration, a little bit more speed, and thusly you get just that little bit more of bragging rights. Plus, it kind of just looks sexy when you have pocketed aluminum like this and it kind of looks like it's purpose built and a lot of care was given to the design, which I like to think that there was. That's enough of me babbling on about the design. Let's actually get into the video and see how this design hits the pavement or hits the metal in this case. Alrighty, so kicking things off, we are going to be kicking off with a banger and that is the masking tape trick. This is an old machinist trick for fixing work pieces to beds. Basically, if you take masking tape and you mask both sides, the bed and the workpiece, and you put a little super glue between them, it'll set it and you can forget it, at least until the end where you pull the tape up. And also introducing the star of today's show, this is CRC cutting oil. It's this nice little foam. It's also very sticky and it is used to prevent what you just saw there, stalls. So it's important to note whenever you are using, whenever you're cutting metal, so we have a metal end mill and we're cutting aluminum, which is still a pretty soft metal, but whenever you have metal on metal contact, you need some kind of lubrication. And cutting oil is designed to basically do just that, allow you to cut. So it's specially formulated to allow the end mill to pass over a little bit more easy to evacuate chips. But in this particular instance, this stuff is really, really sticky. So as you can see, those little chips, they're just getting stuck absolutely everywhere. It was a nightmare to clean these off. But through trial and error, running really, really slow, this is like 200 millimeters per second. If we're lucky with a one millimeter depth of cut, and before long, we get something that looks a little like this. Hey, that kind of looks like a back plane. And then I get to do my first of many test fits for this build. So here are the linear rails, but the, the holes that I drilled or the holes that I designed with were slightly off from the ones on the linear rails. So I took the back plane over to my handy dandy drill press. Well, it's not so handy dandy. I think the motor's actually going out on it. So I have to like 
really be gingerly with the plunges on this, but I was able to widen out the holes and get them threaded and tapped with this M5 tap, which will not be long for this world. Those of you who work with metal, you know exactly what's coming, but now we get to open up our lead screw shipment. And this is a pretty standard lead screw set. It's a 60 millimeter lead screw with the ball and the flange that actually like sits around the nut. And so that's that silver part that you see me actually screwing in there. And then there's just a standard BF12 and BK12 bearing block that support on either side and keep the lead screw just nice and sturdy. So. I think a lot of us, our first foray into linear motion is through like 3D printing and those are like super duper small lead screws. So when you get to step up to these bigger, beefier ones, it's always kind of a joy. So I was having fun test fitting everything there, but the test fit went well. And so we get to proceed into the next part, which is machining out our carriage plate. And as you can see, I've gotten a little bit of a knack. I got the parameters dialed in for tapping off or touching off these holes, which I'm gonna drill out later. And after this operation, tragedy struck. Well, this particular operation, this pocketing operation. This particular operation actually killed my spindle. This strong, sturdy ER11 or router 11 spindle that I got from Open Builds gave me one and a half years of amazing service doing battle with hardwoods, softwoods, and now aluminum. And it spun its final spin on this last part. I tried to disassemble it and figure it out, but there was just some burnt up electronics and it was beyond saving. But not before giving us this beautiful piece and these beautiful surface finishes on the aluminum. So for a hobbyist machine, I feel like this is really solid. So from there we move on doing tap and there it is, rite of passage for all machinists. I broke a tap off in this plate. So there is a part of my shop that is forever in this particular assembly. You'll notice that there's a little bit of a gap between the plate. So I had to widen out the holes here and I created little flanges or well, not a flange, but a spacer from just aluminum stock. And with my spindle out of commission, I have to manually machine the top coupler. And this is where I give a shout out to my high school engineering teacher, Mr. Easley, who taught us all how to do engineering drawings because, and how to interpret engineering drawings. So as you can see, I printed out the drawing and I'm actually using it as a template. I would not know how to do this without Mr. Easley. So shouts to Brian Easley, Mr. Easley from McKinney Boyd High School and teaching us how to do machine drawings. So got everything tapped out. And then our next challenge came in drilling out the hole where the actual shaft of the motor was going to meet the coupler and the ball screw. As you can see here, a regular hole saw doesn't work. So I sent off and ordered a proper like metal cutting inch and a half drill bit. And that worked a treat, just not on the drill press. Like I said, the engine or the motor is dying on this drill press. So try as I may, I had to actually resort to using a hand drill which just tore right through the, the aluminum no problem. And we've got an assembly. Also, the gang guitar is also on the bench. But check out this assembly. Here it is mounted on the actual machine. And it's all coming together. So, also had to replace our Fearless Router 11 with a new ER11 spindle from Nemo Labs, N-Y-M-O. I think it's pronounced Nemo. And believe it or not, that's actually a little bit quieter than the Router 11 was towards the end of its life. So with all of that assembled, we could do our first test cut. And it was a pretty solid test cut. As you can see here in the time lapse, it's doing pretty solid. There's no crazy like tram lines or overlap, but I did notice there's a little bit of play in the left to right on this particular assembly. And so I've narrowed it down to a couple things. Firstly, I 3D printed these bearing blocks that would basically sit between the carriage plate and the bearings. And I also realized that I never thread locked any of the threads. So that's what we're going to do now. Here's a little time lapse of me replacing those metal spacers with a bearing block, just creating more surface area for the carriage plate to mate to and thusly have less sort of play left and right and i replaced all or i thread locked all of the screws so that they stay super duper tight and i also used my mini level at the top to make sure that the carriage plate is trammed left and right 
And then, as all engineers do, I sat there and I tweaked and tuned my acceleration curves till I got it as absolutely quick as possible. And here was the product of our labors. So here it is, just cutting and absolutely destroying. I think this is a four or six millimeter depth of cut. Here's a time lapse as well, where it's just absolutely chewing. And like I said, the surface finish on this particular guitar, it's hard to see, but it's a lot smoother. I basically was able to do the step over at like half a millimeter and it comes out super smooth. I think I start sanding here from 220 grit, whereas previously I would have to start sanding at like a 120 grit. So just the upgraded spindle and the added rigidity and the reduced step over means that we can do so, so much more with the actual spindle here. So that's kind of the long and the short of it. So thanks for watching. It's been a really fun kind of go about to get it upgraded. And I realize this is a little bit of a break from tradition because you guys are used to watching me do guitar builds and stuff like that. But a big part of building guitars is the CNC part of it. Um, we can have a whole debate on CNC versus hand tools and I don't want to discredit anybody that does build guitars by hand. I'm just not that guy. I don't have the patience for it and I think that CNC machining is really, really cool. I've wanted to have a CNC machine for a very long time so I'm very honored and very privileged to be able to build one and kind of cobble it together and do these cool designs and make them available to you guys out here on YouTube. And I will have plans for the Leviathan Drive as well. I can make them available on Thingiverse if there's an interest. So if you're a hobbyist machinist or somebody that's just interested in having the Fusion 360 models and the drawings and stuff like that, feel free to let me know in the comments. I will happily upload them to like Thingiverse or some sort of platform so that you guys can play around with it and maybe improve on it. But Ultimately, I'm really curious to how many of you guys out there are like machinists or CNC people. There's a lot of really, really talented machinists out there and my hat's off to you guys because I only do this recreationally. So I'm sure there's so, so much wisdom that I could <laughs> receive from you guys. So if there, you guys have any tips on you know, running the CNC machine or how to optimize things, I'm learning new things every single day and I love talking to machinists. So definitely drop it down below. And while you're down there, feel free to comment and let me know what you thought of the video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, all that good stuff. I normally do thank yous just about every video, and I want to thank you guys again. It's been a couple weeks since I did the last video, but the last couple of videos have been absolutely exploding. The Gengar build part two will be coming out really, really soon. I also just started another build, which is going to be the first guitar that I'm ever going to sell, which I'm really, really stoked to show you guys it's got a really really cool design that i think you're gonna like so kicking the new year off hard here at mad lad so make sure you're subscribed and you can ride with us through 2024 and beyond so once again i've been drew thank you guys so so much for watching it would mean the world if you like comment and subscribe but if not just you being here has been an absolute delight thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch me ramble and talk about stuff that i enjoy it really means a lot and i hope you have a fantastic day Always remember that you are wanted, you are loved, and you are appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has, and the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world, and change it. That's what the world's waiting on. You. Till next time, guys. Be good to one another, be absolutely mad, and I'll see you in the next one.